Well, hi there guys and gals. Here it is, my sixth evolution of RC little glider conversions. This time, the little biplane. Now you may notice it looks a bit different now to the way it did in the build blog. I wasn't very happy about the aesthetic look of it and I'd considered making the upper wing longer. And as I still had the bits that I'd chopped off, I decided to trim them a bit and glue them back on. Now the overall span is 750mm top, 650 bottom. And the other thing I did was I cut a gentle curve on the end of each spar, much like the original one. That also looks more pleasing to the eye because it just looks awful cut off, severely straight chop. I think it looks much better now. So as I say, I've done a complete build block which goes into the detail of it, what the motor is, what the speed controller is, what the prop is and so on. But before we go into that, let's take a very quick look at my other five evolutions, including my first one, of which there is a really big build blog which goes into all the detail. It's had actually, I said 10,000 views, it's had over 20,000, 27,000 views now, I think. So that's got all the detail of how to, how to put these things together. And I'll also mention in my build blog how I've made my undercarriage. So let's take a quick look at my other five little conversions, including a twin, which I think is very pretty. And then we get into the build blog. Big chunky motor on the front, big heavy battery, very rough. But there's a full build blog for that one in the links at the end. This was the second, a bit tidier. And in fact, this is a Wish glider, which is the sort of cheapo, pretty rough coffee from Wish, but same price. This is a bit tidier and much lighter weight. I didn't put as much carbon in it, smaller motor and so on. This is the third and undoubtedly the prettiest. And there's a full build blog for this one, my lovely little twin, which flies like a dream. I think it's a great looking plane. There's a, there's a whole build blog for that as well in the details below. Um, so check it out. But this, I'm very, I was very pleased with this. Nice clean construction. Um, anyway, I won't go on about that now. There's, as I say, there's a build block for it. This was the fourth. I don't know, you may have seen some of the disastrous flights I've had with it. It's been very twitchy. Anyway, I won't go into that. But I think I might have solved it now with a, a completely moving elevator. So video's coming up of that soon. This was the fifth, which is quite pretty. I called it Little Stumpy because when I first built it, it had a very short fuselage with the tail here didn't work at all well so I've actually extended it with a bit of carbon. I'll show you some test flights of that soon too. And finally now we come to the little biplane and here she is. I won't go into the electrics at the moment, motor, prop, speed controller and so on. I'll do that after the build blog. Any questions? Build blog's coming up now. Any questions stick them in comments below. So here we go. So I've made a start on the wings, I've decided how what length I want. I've chopped off that much. I'll, I'll put the dimension on there somewhere. Got a little bit of carbon in, did the hot water treatment to straighten it. So I've got two wings that are pretty straight, actually still a little tiny bit of dihedral. And I've used very thin carbon in one of them. I want to keep this really light. Next step, of course, will be figuring how to mount them. Now I did a bit of research and it suggested that in fact biplanes don't have that much considering the increase of wing area they don't actually have that much more lift than a single wing aircraft and it's partly because of the disturbance of air as it flows between the two so it's recommended that the distance between the two wings is at least one cord like so so in other words they've got to be very well spaced and they also have to have a slight overhang so I've got to figure out how to do that I mean one wing is going to have to be under here figure where to put it I'm gonna to have to make a little cut out there I think so that it sits at the right angle of dangle and then make some struts to support the upper bit but anyway that's the start I'll come back in a bit once I've done a bit more tinkering see you in a bit right well the first job really is to cut a little slot in the bottom of the fusey here that I can locate this in now I've made a little template of the shape of the the wing in the middle and I've marked this up and then what I've got to do is probably with a stiff bit of hot wire is go into it like that and cut a slice out but of course it's got to be in the same plane as the one on the top so that's what I'm trying to do now maybe only going about so far 
So wish me luck. Well this is the technique I'm using. It's kind of make it up as you go along. I'm just getting a bit of hot wire here over the gas and just taking a slice out. I've marked it with a felt tip pen and of course you've only got one shot at this. You've got to get it in the right plane this way as well obviously otherwise it's not going to sit right but if you get it wrong you don't get a second chance with this. I'll keep going. It's easier to do it off camera. Be back in a sec. Let's see how I get on. Right, well, I cut the slot and in fact I think the word is actually I butchered the slot. That was very, very difficult. There's got to be a better way of doing that. But just about it's okay. And with a bit of hot glue there, maybe I can cover it up. But I've just about got it in the right plane. I mean, it looks absolutely diabolical. But if I slide it backwards and forwards to there, it's in the right plane. It's going to need a lot of hot glue around it and chimming around to disguise it. But I think that's probably the worst bit of this. If you can find a different way to fix that wing on there, I would do it because that was a nightmare. The other thing I've got to do, of course, is cut some ailerons. Do that before I glue it in position. I have seen some biplane conversions with two sets of ailerons, upper and lower, but I went for just one. And I'm not going to go into great detail about how you cut them and cut the bevel because I explained it previously in a couple of other videos. Check those out. Well, it doesn't look so bad now it's glued into place. You've got to get it in the right plane this way. You've got to get it centered right that way and in the right plane that way. Anyway, moving on, the standoffs. I've got an SE5 biplane made in foam board, the flight test one. I've printed the wing struts from that and the spacer as a kind of guide and I'm going to use that pretty much that format to make the wing struts. So there's a strut that goes there and there's a strut that goes here. Right so here it is my slightly modified SE5 flight test foam board strut. So that's the struts that I've made. It's actually just about the size of the cord of the little glider so I think that's good enough for me. I've modified it a bit. You need a flat edge at one and you need a curve at the bottom. So I made a template, put the curve on. I've stuck it to the upper wing first. Use the square to make sure it's square. That's the curve and that's going to go on like so onto the lower wing. Actually, I'm quite pleased with that, I must admit. Yeah, I think that's worked out okay. The placing of it, I've kind of adjusted so that Obviously these two surfaces have to be parallel to each other when the wings mounted. So that should, you can position it backwards and forwards a little bit until you've actually got them parallel. I don't suppose a degree or two matters too much. And I've just marked this very carefully to make sure it's square this way um, and that the distances are fine so that the wings are actually in line with each other. And that's going to be the, where the front edge is going to go. So pretty straightforward really say the worst part was actually cutting that slot but now I've got some hot glue in it and I guess it looks kind of okay but that was pretty tricky. Right moving on. Right so here it is all stuck together. Struts glued in properly. Hot glue that is. Elevator not glued in position yet but it's cut and ready to run and as I said earlier, I haven't gone into great details about cutting ailerons and elevators, fitting the servos to them and so on, because it's all in my first build blog video, which I will link at the end. Right, so here it is, the finished article. Quite pleased with it. I think it looks quite nice actually, a bit, but a bit like a box kite though. Motor on the front here is Turnigy D2205. 2300 kV. I tried it with a two bladed 5045 and I think it probably would have flown but I think get a bit more grunt with a th three bladed and with an 800 milliamp 3S the motor's not getting warm so I reckon that's going to be okay. I've got a 20 amp speed controller which is probably overkill. First thing I had to do was try and figure out where the COG would be. Now they generally say COG is about a third of the cord. Cord on this is about 150, 160 
so that would make the COG just about 50 or 55 which is what they usually say. The overlap of the two wings was about 40 so I figured if that's where the COG should be if I come forward about 15 millimeters I think the COG should be about here. Now one advantage of leaving this hole in the middle is I can adjust the COG by sliding this battery backwards and forwards. I mean once I'm happy that I've got the right position I shall fit it a bit more securely, put some foam in there or something. But that worked okay. Did I say 20 amp speed controller which is probably overkill but better to be safe than sorry. I deliberately put the elevator servo in the tail and as I said all the detail about fitting this kind of cuff stuff like the aileron servos which I'm rather pleased with there because I've kind of neatly hidden them under these stickers all that kind of detail is in my other build blog so I'm not going to go into it haven't put any carbon in here left it pretty lightweight ah, and that brings me neatly to my undercarriage which I will rip off and show you in more detail it's held on with a little carbon rod, rod across there got a bit of velcro so if I do decide I want to hand launch I can easily take it off I'm going to put another bit of velcro here to stop stop the front moving around but it's actually pretty secure like that this is just foam board a bit of wire I've made some different wheels from what you saw in that first bit these are slightly bigger diameter bit of foam board bit of wire hot glue gun reinforcing tape and that is remarkably strong and seems to do the job and of course I've cut a little tail skid out of foam board as well which is on there I'm pretty confident that this is going to fly well and so hopefully coming up in the not too distant future there's going to be a test flight for this anyway I think I've covered everything I can blab on and say about it it's come out all up weight with that little lipo around 400 grams which is about the same weight as the flight test foam board SE5 which has got the same motor and pretty much the same prop and that flies really well and the wing form on the little glider is a much nicer aerofoil so it should be more efficient yeah I don't see any reason why that that shouldn't fly with that motor and prop combo and when I put it on the ground and fire it up it does shift off pretty fast so that's that wait a minute stop press what about the maiden oh here it is coming up but did it survive hmm good question right well here we are then and here is the um oh sod it every time I turn up here and think good it's not half term there's no kids no people around immediately you get some people walking along your runway don't you and I must say usually the grass is long here which is much safer if you're going to pile it in well here we are take two normally that park the grass is actually long and they've the council have been and cut the grass I think I'm just going to go for it here take a chance and see what happens a bit windier than I would have liked oh bum Whew. straight up everything all right still looks like it I'm going to come into the longer grass half throttle No, why is it climbing like I can see why. Look at the angle of that. I haven't got enough down thrust. Yeah, I've got loads of up thrust there. Look at that, that is terrible. At least it survived. No damage, but a bit wet. And I should have noticed before that I've got way too much up thrust. We need more like that much down thrust. And it's a bit windy and wet anyway, so not the day for it. OK, back to the drawing board. So there it was, my warts and all maiden of my little biplane conversion. Hope you found the build blog useful anyway. And hopefully the next test flight will be more successful once I've added some down thrust. If you did find it useful, don't forget to hit subscribe wherever it is down there. And maybe even give the video a like. And check out some of my other videos like all the other build blogs and so on, which I shall link kind of at the end. But that's it for now. 
thanks for watching happy flying and stay safe and I'll catch you all again soon